Yeah, no, we're really excited about Ethan. Uh, it's been a lot of work. Uh, we've been almost 12 developers on the block size team that have been actually working on this. Um, one thing I just want to mention that, um, you know, that there is a, there is one caveat, I guess, one difference between a centralized and a decentralized exchange is that um, whenever a transaction is made, it takes a little bit longer than, than what people are expected to. Um, however, um, there's the pro to that. And it's that when you get your coins are yours. And if you look at the situation like with Cryptopia, where the wallet maintenance was down, you know, the exchange had those coins, your coins, and you couldn't take them out. And, um, you know, it's one of those things where it, you, you, can, you can panic when you have those coins and you don't know when you're going to get them back or you don't know if this exchange has been hacked and, you, you, you know, it's really dangerous. So what's going to happen, and I want you guys to all mentally, be mentally prepared for coins that are really fast, um, for example, like T-Pay, um, you'll be able to get your coins. When you see the trading book, you'll be able to kind of see and get your coins really fast. For, for coins like Bitcoin, though, um, it'll be just kind of like when you send somebody Bitcoin and how long it takes the process. So if you see a trade for Bitcoin, you execute that trade, uh, you'll see it on your dashboard that you've um, initiated a, tra uh, a trade, but you will basically get your coins as soon as it is confirmed, right? And that's extremely important, you know, especially when you have make sure that the network doesn't have any double spend attacks and stuff like that. So keep that in mind that there is a pro and a con with, uh, with all of this. Now, because of technologies that are coming out, um, for example, Lightning Network for Bitcoin and eventually stuff that's coming out for Litecoin, there are a lot of side chains and eventually atomic swaps, which will allow these transactions to become faster and faster. Okay. And that is part of the roadmap for the next uh, six months up to literally June, July of next year that we're gonna be improving on Ethan. So Ethan, when we release it, will not be the final version. Uh, it'll be the, the first version and then there will always be continuous updates and a lot of things that we will have, for example, mobile, a mobile app that's just dedicated to Ethan. And then we will have obviously the backbone of Ethan integrated into token pay so that you can do simple swaps which is basically trading. Um, and you'll be able to do a lot of uh, things. Um, we look at Ethan as not just a trading platform, but eventually the ability to be able to add other apps into it so that you can customize Ethan to be able to do different things. When I spoke to the developers about this about seven months ago, I'm trying to remember, it's been, it's been a blur. Um, I said that I wanted Ethan to be the Bloomberg of crypto. And what I mean by that is I want people to have information. I want people to have tools so they can see what's going on. I want to provide as much transparency of the assets they're going to be trading so that they understand what it is they're actually trading for. So like, let's say, for example, you have a portfolio strategy, you can work on a portfolio strategy. If you want to analyze or look at <clears throat> some of the stuff that's happening, um, of a specific project will be able to have data for you right then and there that will show you, okay, this data has this activity. Um, this uh, project has had no press releases or no news in the past six months. Um, the CEO has not never been on a live stream, you know, stuff like that. So that <clears throat> if anybody wants to get involved in a project, they're able to really look at what it is that they can um, make an assessment on, okay?